Which is Hill. Hello and welcome back to the new episodes of Which is Hill in 2018. I am Pat and I am here with a familiar face, or for you guys' voice. <laughs> you can you can actually yeah, you know, I think you could see my face if I talk. I'm that special. I th- you mu- wait, did we put your face on one of the episodes? Actually I don't think so. I haven't been oh. here since like the first two episodes, I think it was. Yeah, of season one of Witch's Hill back yeah. in twenty seventeen. It's it's been a busy it's been a busy, what, eight months now? Yeah, we've been doing a lot of shit. Uh oh, shit. but by the way, yeah, hit, uh Tim Trace is finally back and he he's been off doing a lot of things as well as everybody in Witch's Hill. Um Things just got a little busy for us. Yeah, and we just kind of want to explain that... We're sorry. Yeah, we're sorry. We're, like, <laughs> for the quality of the episodes, we want to be able to bring you guys everything that you guys deserve. And the only way that we can fully push out everything that we want is to take time and put all of our effort into those said projects. Speaking of projects, we have... Quite the number of things coming out in 2018. You have no idea what's in store for you guys. And we would love to tell you all about it, but due to certain legal obligations, we cannot discuss at this moment what we are doing. But there are big things in the works. Don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about it. Turn your eyes the other way. Yeah, don't look the other way. Don't worry about what I'm doing. Okay, you know, it's all I got. You gotta go check your laundry. Your laundry. (laughs) Fucking Christ. (laughs) But, as of right now, expect certain episodes to not necessarily have a set schedule for release. It's It's gonna be a little disorganized for just a little bit. You know, we're still getting certain things put into place that will make this a lot easier, and I guess more streamlined for everyone. And more enjoyable for everybody. Yes. Uh, Because, you know, like we've been saying many times, there's a lot of things planned here. And we're going to be slowly releasing everything as we can. Um, uh, Fuck. Something that I wanted to point out um, to many of the horror fans that are out there. And and certain things that I've seen from other pages. I'm not going to name drop anybody, but I've seen certain pages almost like doing a pay for your promotion. Like... You want to get your art out there. You want to get your music out there. You want to get your film or whatever. If you have it recorded or any type of copies of whatever you have, send them or upload them to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash group slash Witches Hill Horror Talk Show. We want to see everything. We want to promote your stuff. We need, we need more entertaining people in the horror community. And this is anything. Art, uh, music film, anything you could possibly think of that you could put into the horror world, we want to build this community up. It and is, it's been something we've cared about since we were fucking little kids. Yeah, dude, I grew up on, like, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th. Little one uh, that not many people know. This little fucker terrified me as a kid. The little Zuni fetish warrior doll. You showed me that. Did I, I've been trying to find it. It's on the Trilogy of Terror. Uh, they were awful but that little zuni doll oh my god it still fucking haunts me man honestly i think the only thing that really truly haunts me from my childhood besides my creepy uncle is <laughs> is the um that moment in roger rabbit when sorry spoiler alert but um dude drops him da- the little cartoon down into the fucking goo and it's just it, it was a shoe and it's just like ah, ah, and it's just slowly dying and it's that, what the when, hell? When he when he started talking, when he was the cartoon, and his voice got super high, and his eyes started bulging out. Oh god, dude, that fucking scared the shit out of me. But you can even ask my parents. My parents said that I loved that movie more than anything <laughs> because I loved getting scared. Exactly. It's been, and we know we're not the only ones like this. Oh no, so many of you guys are out there. So let's build this community up. You know, you have anything that you want to bring to light that you want people to talk about, to share with the world, to get your message out. Come to us. And speaking of people who give back and are very set in the horror community already, is Ghoulish Mortals. If you haven't heard of them, search them up on Facebook and I'm sure on Twitter and a couple other places. 
They're a store that just opened up in St. Charles, which is uh, at 228 West Main Street in St. Charles, Illinois. They're, uh, they're a horror store geared towards pretty much everybody. They, it's just a lot of cool things that they've done themselves. They have artwork from uh, the artists themselves with their like signatures on it. Uh, oh God, there's so many cool things. The, the first time we stumbled there, I p- found a... Uh, it was a little Cthulhu with a top hat and a monocle. I was so happy to see that. I bought it that second. And then uh, we were actually there earlier today. And I ended up getting a Hellraiser painting. Yes. I got a uh, Evil Dead painting, uh, the, which will tie into today's episode. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Yes. But if you are in the area around St. Charles, Elgin, or Geneva, make your way over there if you're a really big fan of horror. And keep an eye on, on this place. This place is going to be <sighs> booming come July. It is. Or around that time, I should say. It is so wonderful. I, I love this place. I plan on doing a lot of shopping there. So expect to hear a lot about them through us, and hopefully f- through fans who have actually already been there. Um, but again, that is ghoulish mortals. But quickly, let's go back to uh, some of the projects that we were talking about. I know we can't yes, yes. say too, too much, but do keep an eye out for something uh, along the lines of auditions. That is as much as we can really say about this right now. Yes. Uh, um, <laughs> it's, it feels weird dancing on this topic, it, but... Yeah, it's... Uh, various projects will need certain talent that we will be holding auditions for. We would love our fans and anybody who's in the horror community to, you know, get on that as much as they can and uh, show the world what you got. Yeah. Because everybody needs a, n- a new slasher. We need a new ghoul out there. But moving along, over the course of, you know, the couple months that we had been MIA, uh, we had a lot of shit that we had been tossing around as a, as in our own projects, certain things that we had been doing. You guys have heard about the Melrose House and the documentary that we're doing. We are still currently... Working on that. Um, oh, God. We've had a couple setbacks, but we've also had a lot of really fucked up things happen since then. Uh, things that we've caught and so on and so forth. But I'm not going to dwell so much on that. Um, That'll be an interesting one. Well, I'll, I'll tell you that much. Yes, yes. I've shown Tim some of the evidence that we've had. He's heard it, not just from me, but the <laughs> other teams or, or the other uh, members of our team. And it's just all around spooky times. But other, <laughs> other than that, uh, we were at Walker Stalker this year in Chicago. And for those of you who have never really been to a, a con before and are interested in it, I would suggest going to this one. This one actually is pretty fun. Uh, honestly, it's one of my first cons. And it being, it being geared towards mainly just horror and a lot of uh, Walking Dead stuff. Um, there were a lot of cool things to do there. Uh, they, they had like booths with a, a raven, like you get your photo, te- photo taken with a raven. You'd like dress up in like this giant uh, cavalcade of bullshit. I I don't know what to name it. It, was, it looked like Renaissance Fair type <laughs> stuff, but not Renaissance. I I don't know. I don't know what to call it, but. Uh, they had a lot of different shops geared towards many different aspects of horror. Uh, they had actors there. Uh, ran into uh, Eugene A. Clark from Land of the Dead. Uh, he, he's the guy who played uh, Big Daddy and led a zombie revolution. It was, it was amazing. He was an amazing guy. And th- there's just a lot of cool things to do there. Uh, they had Q&As. We heard a bunch of things from uh, the, the actor who played Dwight in The, the Walking Dead. Uh... Michael Rooker was there. Uh, fuck, man. There, there were a lot of people. I uh, met some artists who were putting out their own comic books. Um, I was really jealous that I didn't get to go to this one. I'm not yes. Lie. Actually, uh, Tim, if you could, <laughs> behind the Hellraiser thing that we got today, can you hand me that? I want to I wanna give that guy a shout out. This, this is the guy who we met actually waiting in, in line at one of the uh, stands there, and he was right behind us, and he was a really nice guy, and he's put, putting out his own comic, right? And it, I know this isn't geared towards 
really horror or anything, but he was there, and I think his name is Ale Maxe, or, uh, hmm, I think that's what it is. Yeah. Um, and the artwork is by Stephen Butler. But this comic is called Xeno Guardian Red Visor Go. If you get a chance and it's online or if you know the guy or get your hands on a copy of it, give the guy a shout out because dude's really nice. That does like to give back to the community and he's got a bunch of cool artwork. We got a uh, giant Spider-Man thing. He had he had some Hellraiser shit. I know I keep saying Hellraiser, but I was on a kick. I was on a fucking kick. You've been on a kick for a little while. I know, I'm sorry. Uh, They they did have It stuff there. They had um, Shining and like everything that you could think of for just horror in general was fucking there. And if if you want to go there, have a good time, possibly connect with other fans and other people who could further your own career and make a joint operation with somebody else, go there. And that's the Walker Stalker Con. And that's that's my blatant plug for them. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But while I was there, I did happen to run into uh, the Great Lakes Association of Horror Writers. It's a little... uh, this was this like little stand that we we came across, and they they had these little uh, pamphlets sitting up, and it just caught my eye, and my girlfriend ended up, like dragging me over there, and they have their own newspaper, their like newspaper or magazine that they're gonna be putting out every year, like an annu- annual one that they put out. Okay. And you can write your own stuff if you're part of the, like if you're part of their group. Uh, it's like an annual fee of only twenty five bucks, and you can write them stories and they'll put it in their magazines or their books and stuff like that. Like they have contests and everything like, but it's all for local writers. It's, yes. it's really awesome. They're giving back. They're like finding groups like this just make me so happy. Yes. But other things that make us happy and possibly pissed off is we have a new segment that we are finally going to do for you guys. And this, this has to do with what I said earlier um, I was really happy today when I found that uh, Evil Dead print, uh, because that's one thing we're going to be talking about today is, in fact, Evil Dead. In this new segment, I believe it's called... Uh, Will It Scare You? Yeah. And this is our section, or little whatever you want to call it, and this is our review yes, on our, certain things. Our very professional, unprofessional, quote unquote, opinions on things that are horror that are supposed to scare you, and we're gonna let you know if they actually will or if they won't. And some of them are kind of obvious whether they will or they won't. Yes, yes. But we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about a couple different movies that we really like, and but we're gonna start breaking them down to ten separate different categories. And really analyze each individual one about every movie. And, and each one has a rating of either 1 or 10. So th- you could get a perfect 100 score and have the best horror movie, or you can have absolute shit. Yes. <laughs> so, um, this. I, I, I want to say let's start off with Evil Dead. We started talking about this the other day, and this is actually where the idea of this episode came from. Yeah. Um, this is going to get heated. Oh, this is... Yeah. There's, there's one very thing that we have differing opinions on. But and we're both filmmakers, so we kind of break this shit down. Yes. Um, so, I say let's end on that one. Let's let's maybe start off with... Um, what were the three we were going to do? The three? Um, oh, Insidious. second in line is Insidious. The first movie, Insidious. Now, I know that this movie is kind of controversial for certain fans of the paranormal and stuff like that, but we have our own opinions. Um, Now, really quickly, before we get into the movie in itself and start giving it a score, let's go over the the ten categories that we're going to be judging this on. Uh, The first one is going to be the ambience of the entire movie like does it fit does it flow well does it is it deserving of what it's trying to actually do because we've all seen movies where it's supposed to be like super scary and 
it turns out to be the room of horror. If you've seen the room, you know what I'm talking about. It was supposed uh, to be giant drama. No, 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 sorry. That was one of my best favorite me apart. comedies. Tear me apart! Tear me apart! <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. All so right. this, the second uh, category that we're going to start going over is the story structure. And we uh, again, just make sure that it flows. It makes fucking sense. And, you know, it, it's overall enjoyable. Yes. All right. Uh, third category is the villains. I don't, I don't think we need to really say anything about that. Yeah. Are the, are the villains good or is it stupid? Yeah. And even if it is stupid, is it like good? <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, the next is the production value use. Now, when we say this, now we, we had a talk about this. Um, we're not judging these movies based on how much of a production they truly put into it, but rather how they use their production value. Yes. I think everyone has at least one movie that they fucking love that, if you really look at it, is complete fucking garbage. I mean, okay, the first Evil Dead, what was that? Or not Evil Dead, um, Night of the Living Dead. That was made for $500. Classic. Yeah. Yeah. It was still a fucking classic. I mean, not the, scary, but... Yeah, not scary, maybe, still per se. a good movie. Exactly. So, you know, if they have a limited budget, did they use it to their advantage, or did they really just kind of bury themselves in a hole? Yeah. Um, of course, next is acting. Is the acting on point, or is it just like, wow, look at the next, tr- like, wannabe scream queen... Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I want something good with my actors, you know? It's, yep. like, it's like having a good drink with a burger. <laughs> I was going to say something. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut on that one. Um, all right. The, uh, the sixth category is going to be the originality of the story. Yeah. Is it actually original or is it? a remake for whatever purpose and does it actually follow the old story but told in a new interesting way or is it literally like a trace of the old movie like if you were drawing it you literally just traced it it's like oh check it out it's it's brighter now like i get it but like what the hell's the point in my eyes i just don't get it but yeah anyway uh after that is is it believable yeah, it, like, uh, to me, like, if the story itself is more believable than just being like, oh, we got a crazy swamp monster coming out and fucking skinning the kids alive. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> a very frustrating point for all of us. Yes. Um, how was the ending? Did the, did, did the ending kind of uh, leave you hanging high and dry, or did it, like... Uh, was, it, was it justified? Yeah, was it satisfying, or did it blue ball you? I mean, because I will admit, though, sometimes you get those movies that they kind of blue ball you, but the way it's done, it still makes me love it. I understand that. I understand that. What I mean by blue ball is that it's just, it's just done so bad. Like, this, I've seen a certain amount of good movies that it's just like, oh, wow, okay. It took a while getting into, but it actually turned out to be a good movie. But... It the very end of it. Yeah, it's just like, yep. oh, okay, wow. He, all he did was walk off screen. And yeah, okay. AKA the ritual on Netflix. <laughs> I'm sorry. I watched that whole fucking movie. It looked like Blair Witch. Spoiler alert. It's not. <laughs> it's like fucking uh, Princess Mononoke. Take that fucking demon thing. The, the, uh, the God of the fucking woods and then turn him into a demon that likes to pierce people onto trees. I'm sorry if I just ruined that movie for you. But like I said, spoiler alert. And I'm just saving you s- yourself time. He walks off screen. All that shit. And he just, he's still in the fucking woods. He didn't even make it out. He just walks away. What if a fucking wolf got him? Sorry. Sorry. Continue. <laughs> All right. <laughs> My bad. He <laughs> struck a nerve there, did we? <laughs> oh, God. Um, the next category, their, their use of CGI. And um, we all know this. Certain... Certain movies have really relied entirely on CGI, and it's just so awful. Yeah, and, like, I, I get it. Like, CGI can be really, really good if, like, you pay a shit ton of money to get a lot of people behind it. But 
Or you just have someone that actually works on polishing it rather than just yeah. slathering on CGI to cover up bullshit. Yeah, and like, it's all about how the use of CGI is in the film. Um, whether it's just used for like background things or an actual character or anything like that. Um, the last category is uh, the... Um, Oh my god, the M. Night Shyamala effect. Oh god. Twists. What a twist. If any. If any. Um, how were they done? Because they're, you know, there's good ones, there's bad ones, and it's all about how it's done. Yes. But this is the criteria of things that we're rating it off of. Yes, so every, every movie we discuss... Whenever we do the Will It Scare You segment, is going to go off of this list. And sorry about hogging your mic, Tim. I just had to see that thing, so I'm blind. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um, all right, so without further ado, let's get started on our first movie. As we already said, Insidious, the first one. Ten. Right off the bat, ten for me. Ten. Ten for what? Ambience. Number one. Number for one. Number ambience. one ambience, yes. ten. Yeah, you know what? I, I could really give it that. Um... Everything from we even when it now obviously okay obviously I, I don't think I need to pre- preface this but when we're talking about these movies spoiler alert we're spoiling the entire movie yes so if you haven't seen these movies when we're talking about this you should probably go watch them stop now go watch it come back and then be informed yes, yes. <laughs> don't be don't be high and dry and just I mean I guess you could be high but you know I'm dry man. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, the ambience, okay, when, when he goes into the further, you know, that was actually, I thought, done well. You know, It, it was w- interesting. It was a new take. It was definitely a new take. So I think I would give that throughout the whole thing, throughout the whole f- feel of the movie, yeah. I would also give that a 10. For the ambience? Yes. Okay. So, okay, we're in greens there. So far, we're at a score of 10. Okay. And, uh, all right, here, I'm going to write your score down. Or, actually, here, you write your score down. What am I doing? Fine. I'm not the fucking coach, bro. Okay, bro. Get off my field, bro. All right. The next is going to be story structure. 9.5. Now, why do you give it a 9.5? I give it a 9.5 because there is something that I'm just kind of like, just iffy about. It just almost struck me the wrong way in the movie. Hmm. His mom. The, the, um, uh, fuck, what was his name? The, uh... What, are you the, dad, about? the dad. The dad's mom. Oh, his mom. Yeah, his mom. Okay. The one who I uh, had already, like, knew about everything. And she just kind of comes in and is like, You've been having these dreams again. I know what you're talking about. I have a psychic that you can talk to. Like, if he's had these problems all his life, like, back when he was a kid, and, like, he just started having it happen, and you kind of knew about it. Like, I'm, su- I'm sure you've been in your kid's m- life, a- it, like, in the movie, more shown, like, between those two than actually shown to the audience, right? Yeah. Like, if it's a real story, you have had a lot of interaction with your kid. It just looks like it, and he's humble with you, so it's not like there's some type of fucked up thing, like, you used to break bottles over my head, Mom, I don't trust you. <laughs> like, it, it's, it's not that type of situation. It's... I don't know. It just seemed a little... Just the way... Interjected? Okay, so you're saying the way that it was just kind of like, oh, I know. It's like, fuck, we have this awesome story, but how do we link these two things together? Yeah, I mean, I guess you could argue that, you know, based on the next one, I think it's the second one, they really touched base more on him as a child and the problems that he had. Yes. No, wait, wasn't the second one just, like, what happened after? Wait. No, they did do that one. I'm sorry, I'm confusing the movies. They've done so There's many. There's four. There's four? Yeah. The fourth I'm... one is the last key. Okay, then I haven't seen that one yet. All I right. just watched that one. But look, focus on this one. Focus on this one. Um, um, yeah, so 9.5 for the story structure, simply uh, for, for me for that reason. It just seemed a little too forced or, like, just off-key to me. I don't know, it might just be me. I know, I guess I could see what you're talking about. I mean, because we, we want to look at this in the way that it when it first came out. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, it was really good, but I never really thought of it that way. That it was like, oh, all of a sudden she knows all of his problems. So, 
it's just she was so casual about it, you know? Like, it's almost like she didn't really care. She's like, you want the advice or not? <laughs> you, you want help or do you want to go to hell? I don't know. I think, I think I'm going to score that a 9. A 9? Yeah, I'm not. Okay. I'm gonna take away that point five that you gave him. Okay, because to me it was just like right there, but it was just like mm. it's like adding just too much of a good spice to something. Okay, a little too much spice. A little too much. Uh, next one is villains. Eight point five. Eight point five. Eight point five. That's an interesting one. You know, I could say probably I would probably gear more towards an eight. Actually, I say eight point five simply because. Of certain things that have happened in the movie that reflect things that have happened to us and some of our affiliates out on certain paranormal expeditions that just it's creepy but the reason why I gave it to me that almost like a lower end score is because I didn't care for the way the demon looked when you first see him it's it's jarring when he, when he pops behind his head. Yes, but yeah, uh, that made me jump like a motherfucker. Everybody's second thought is why the hell is Darth Maul in here? Yeah, that's definitely. I mean, they didn't really think that through. I mean, they, he definitely it was used really well, um, but I definitely did think many times like, hey, look, Darth Maul's fucking haunting people. <laughs> <laughs> why why is he shackling up kids? I don't get this. Now, the reason why I think I gave it an 8, and even less, is because, if I can be truthfully honest, he did a, the, the um, main villain, I guess this main demon, he did a really good job fucking making me jump throughout the fucking movie and creeping me the hell out. Mm-hmm. Until they found him in the further. They made him look like some yeah. kind of fucking sa- Satan Baphomet ripoff. And he just, I don't know, to me, he seemed less scary there. Which yeah. is ironic, because, I mean, he's got a little kid chained up there, and he's, like, listening to fucking Tiny Tim or some shit. No, don't get me wrong, it's fucking disturbing, but... He didn't see, I don't know, something about it just, it kind of, like, took it away from me for a little yeah. bit. It's almost like that that theory that when you give, when you give, like, you have this demon or this ghost... Or some entity that you never see, and it's constantly freaking you out because you never know where it's coming from. It's the embodiment of it, like the mystery, mystery behind the embodiment that leaves you with some type of fear. And like once you actually see it, it's, you're just like, oh, yeah. yeah. It, it kind of is like, oh, well, that's not. It's it maybe it's just because it's not quite what you were picturing. So for some psychological reason, it's lesser. I don't know, but yeah, that that yeah. whole scene just kind of was just like. Eh. So, I, I'd still say it's good, but, because, I mean, I, I don't want to discredit the entire movie. Because mm-hmm. it's, I still admit, that fucking little kid dancing to Tiny Tim that first time, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Alright, so, um, the next one is projection value use. I gave that a 10, because I thought they thought pretty much everything through into a new way, and the way that the further was in that house. It was interesting. It was really... I was like nightmares that I had as a child, dude. Like, that's like some eerie shit. So that hit home for you. Yeah, I was like, oh, fuck, okay. Somebody else has had the same type of dreams I've had. Maybe you've been to the further. (laughs) Explain a little bit. Um, yeah, I would say I would give that a 10 as well. Um, because... Like I said, I mean, a lot of the things were shot very well. Uh, they did a really good job of fucking, especially with certain fucking camera angles, the way they used when the, the demon was in the upper corner mm-hmm. of the house and the chick was drawing it. That that was creepy. That They did a really good job with a lot of the ways they did things. So Oh, yeah. I'll definitely give that a 10 out of 10. Um, how about the acting? The only one that I did... Okay, no, no, not the only one. There was two. Two. There was two. There were two people. Uh, the mom, for uh, not Dalton's mom, uh, the father's mom, the one that we were originally talking about. Yeah. I mean, that was kind of self-explanatory when I was just kind of like, she was just, you know, too so calm and like, just demons, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, well, fuck. It's like, oh, yep, I've been through this before. <laughs> yep, yep. It was kind of too, like, uh, 
willy nilly, I guess you could kind of say. Yeah. So. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. Well, sorry, dear. Oh, I'm sorry you're being haunted. Oh, that's unfortunate, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Her and then um, the mom from Detroit, Detroit Rock City. That's where I originally know her from, but Elise. Elise? Yeah, the no, psychic. You didn't like Elise? No, no, I love Elise. There was just the way she was saying certain things, like, oh, yeah, it's just what it is. Like, I get it, like, but not everybody's being haunted like you are. Okay, Elise? Like, back off. Step down a couple notches. Talk to them like a regular family. Stop being a bitch. Okay? So what do you give it? What did I write down? You wrote down a nine. For acting? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I would, uh... I would also give it a nine. I mean, I don't necessarily agree with you about Elise. You know what? It's not her overall thing. It's just, it was in one scene that I just... I was just like, what? Why are, why are you being like that? It, it could have been the character. Honestly, it could have been the character. But... If that was the character, she hit it on point. So maybe I should fix my score. But as of right now, I think I'm just going to leave it at a nine, just because that was my initial thing. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it an extra point five there. Nine point five is how I feel like it stands. Because yeah, I do agree with you with the uh, the mom of the of the main dad. Yeah, she that was a little. I, know. I love the movie, and like it's pissing me off. I get put on the spot, and I can't remember it. He's going to have to look it up now, but we'll get to that. Um, originality. I think... I, I honestly... 10. Yeah, I put down 10. I mean, it it does feel like it hints upon like Poltergeist a little bit and like some of the other ones, but everything that deals with hauntings and shit like that... Uh, wh- why'd the clock just... Turn off. I don't know. Huh. Maybe the plug got jarred. I'm going to stick with that. We're still yeah. recording, so we didn't lose power. That's good. Anyway. Well, I mean, there's a charge on the laptop. Oh, okay. Well. So, anyway. Um, <laughs> Creepy going on. <laughs> is it believable? Yeah, is it believable? Um, I mean, it's... I gave it a 9.5 because, one, it's it's pretty believable up to, like, the whole mysterious fact. And, like, no matter what anybody says, I don't give a shit who you are. If you sit there and it's like, well, that's not possible, blah, 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 blah. Well, then explain half the shit in the world, okay? Yeah. Smart ass. Like, you're going to sit there and be like, oh, okay, well, this is exactly how it is. You're putting science into the unknown, okay? Right there, should just you just, should just draw that sand line in the sand and just stay on your side, okay? <laughs> like, I get it. Um, so, you you gave it a 9.5? Yeah, yeah, um... I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a solid 9. Yeah? Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I really have to say to it. You pretty much took words out of my mouth. I just put, like, the point five just because, like, you don't know, know what's on the other side, and so, like, you can't really take it as fact, but, like, the what-if factor is just a little, like, hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah. The only reason I'm giving it a nine is mainly because Ed, we talked about it the entire time, the whole situation with the mom. Yeah. Um, it's. I feel like you would want to be on top of that. I mean, I guess you're just trying to bury... I guess she was just trying to bury the past and, like, forget, oh, this never happened, but it's no, I just... Know. How do you forget something like that? You need to watch for that and be on the lookout for that and be proactive towards that. Yeah, she thought if she was be ignorant is bliss, you know? Yeah. So, I guess that would be why I give it a nine. Um, the ending. Ending. Oh, God. Um, no, I'm not gonna lie. That was... I did not like that ending. You didn't like the ending? With the whole, like, uh... Elise being killed. I, I, I saw the sequels coming. I just knew it. I, to me, I felt like they did the sequels just because they did that. They wanted to make some r- r- big dramatic moment at the very end. I think they were just trying to, like, 
J- James Wan is amazing. I oh think God, I love him. I think that he was just trying to make his like trilogy, just telling about the family and everything like that, and, like the person who helped him. And all all four movies go along with what he was kind of doing. Ex- well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even the third one, um, mm. I believe, unless I'm thinking of something else. But um, I don't know. I, I respect it in a way, and I like the whole. Like, the thing got out. Like, it got into the dad. The old woman? Yeah. Yeah. And then they kind of explain about, like, everything that happened in that whole family. And as in-depth as they went with everything and just d- with everything, just even in the, in that movie, just basing off the one movie, I liked it. I liked it because it was just enough to just, like, oh, fuck. Like, what if something like that actually happens? Like, there, there's there been cases of possession, shit like that, so if you believe in certain things, then, like, that is possible. So, if that's possible in somebody else's world, and they believe that, how are we to, like, interpret what that person's going through? If they believe that's an exorcism, what are you seeing that as? Is that a possession? Or is that just them acting erratic? And, like, there's certain things that you can't explain about certain things. I, I, I don't know, I just... I ripped this fucking movie apart in my head. Well, but... I, I'm going to give the ending a 7. Okay. Because like I said, you know, it, it again, not going to disparage the movie. I did like the movie. The ending, I just felt there were a couple things, I mean, with him getting possessed and killing Elise, I was just like, oh, eh. I was bummed, don't get me wrong. It wasn't that I was bummed, it was just kind of like, What? No, I, I can this? get that. I can get that. So what do you get? What do you rate it? For the ending? Yeah. I'd give it an 8. All right. Well, we're still pretty close neck and neck there. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not a perfect ending by any means, but it's definitely one of the better endings in a horror movie I've ever seen. Yeah. All right. Um, now, how about the use of CGI? 10. 10. Because most of it, in from what I believe, is that they used... Like, for the further stuff like that. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Like, CGI background and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I thought I, that was used really it. well. I think they did it just right. Because if if they would have went overboard with it and, like, you saw, like, some crazy fucking morphing demon and stuff like that. Yeah, it's just... I don't know. It takes it away a little bit. Which a movie just popped into my head about exactly what I'm talking about. But I would... Um, yeah, I would give it a 10... You don't really... It seems... Any CGI they used in this seems pretty seamless. I mean, at least me, a normal person, everyday fucking person, I'm not going to fucking... I didn't notice it. So that, to me, is a big, big fucking thing. Um, so how about the twists? It's final category, the twists. Uh, the twists. I've already discussed... My yep. distaste of the whole twist that the old woman just out of nowhere um, possesses the dad and kills Elise. <laughs> the the funny part is is that uh, we have the same score for that as we do with the ending. I again gave the twist an eight. I'm I'm to me that's that's a seven. I can't, I, can't I, I, I don't feel right giving it any more than that. All right, so now we just need to tally up our scores, so. You do mine, because I already started doing yours. Oh, really? Yeah. So, I'm already in the process of doing that. Okay. Just hold tight with us, people. Dun, 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 I suck at multitasking. Dun, dun, dun. Din, 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 din. Wrong show, Tim. Din, what? <laughs> Wrong show, dude. You mean? And you, yeah, the end one was seven. Okay. Oh, shit. Equal! Alright, I have yours. Everybody's waiting now, Tim. How dare you? All right, so um, your score 
Pat, that you gave this is a total of uh, ninety two point five out of a hundred, which is still it's an A. Yeah, I it's would I would do that. Yeah, still a good movie. I I'd, I'd do the movie. Well then, <laughs> what did I get? You put out an eighty nine point five. Oh, just under. I gave just it a under. B. Yeah, I mean. I, I, I still stand by that number. That sounds right in my book. Huh. Well, shit. Well, that was insidious. So let's uh, let's do one more. Well, what are we at right now, time-wise? Uh, probably around, like, half hour-ish, some things. I don't know. I never really time it out. I just kind of go by how many things go off on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it probably sounded so stupid. <clears throat> the next one, we're going to go over... Uh, ooh, it looks like you haven't even rated this one yet, so, uh, let's do this together. Lights Out. For those of you who have not seen Lights Out, again, we would prefer you to actually see the movie rather than hear us base off, uh, the whole cheat sheet right here. So, again, watch it, come back. But anyway, for those of you who have seen it, ambience. Ambience. Um, this job, did a great job. Um, for... Obviously, if, if you didn't know, I mean, this movie came off of just like a little three-minute, it was like a two, three-minute short on YouTube. Yeah, under the same title. Yeah, under the same fucking title. And when I first saw that, you know, that creeped the fucking hell out of me. You know, I'm laying in my bed. I'm doing what everyone does, sitting in bed before I, I fall asleep for, I don't know, two, three hours, scrolling through Facebook like a mindless fucking idiot. And this funny <laughs> fucking video shows up. And that, that made me tuck my feet under my covers. For those of you here who haven't seen even the short, look that up on YouTube. That is just... It's, oh. it's really disturbing. Oh, watch it with the lights out. Watch oh. it with the lights out. Yeah, it, and it, alone. It really does it good. Uh, so the ambience, yeah, hands down, it was fucking... They did a really good job front to back throughout the movie. So what would you give it? I would give it a 10. You'd give it a 10? Yeah. Okay. Um... How about yeah. the story structure? Yeah, I'd give it a 10. And the story structure? The story structure? I thought it was a little weird. You know, I guess really thinking about it, it, yeah, it was definitely weird. The background they gave this, like, I don't know, night demon. For, uh, was it she, Diana? Diana, that's her name. Um, it, it did a really interesting job. So I, I I think I would give that a ten honestly out of it, for story structure. Yeah, I just thought it was a little weird that they didn't explain a hundred percent about the whole like her background with her being with the mom and like a psych ward, and they were doing tests on her, and all of a sudden like, I guess suddenly she's just a demon that somehow haunted her. Yeah. So I mean. And she can't exist without the mom. And it, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm missing a few things here, but I thought it was a little little janky, I guess, to say. But, I mean, I still like it. I'd, I'd probably give it about an 8. An 8? Yeah. I'm going to... I'm going to stand by my 10 on that. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, the villains. 10. 10. Done. That, that's hands down. They did a really good job. She was freaky, dude. Like, I still, just like, out of the corner of my eye, I'm just like, dude, if I ever saw that, just fuck. What do you do? I know. Just that dark outline of just some haggard-ass looking fucking thing. Speaking of awesomeness, just to cut away really quick, for those of you who have seen it, let's give it one more small little cheer for that key fob scene. When he turns the lights on with the fucking hat of the car, oh. and he saves his ass. Like, oh, hell yeah, dude. Oh, God. Fuck yeah. When I, I when I saw that in theaters, everybody fucking stood up and screamed. Yes, I have to admit, like, I, I'm... Because right before that, I'm pretty sure everyone's thinking, like, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? Like, right. what the fuck? Like, and why then, would you run through there? And then he just thinks on his toes. He did the one thing that no one in horror movies ever does and uses common fucking sense. Like, oh, hey, car, lights, bink, and acts on it. And True. actually gets I mean, that does... It kind of require quick thinking because like how quick that was like he just ran through it was about to get to the car and then just lifted up just oh fuck oh fuck and then it was able to press the button like 
good on him for being able to think on his toes like that. But he, I mean, not everybody thinks that clearly in a panic. But I, I also say good on him for being the the concerned outside party to whatever negative thing is going on to the main uh, protagonist and actually surviving. Uh, because yeah, that doesn't happen. That never happens. There's uh-huh. always that main person that's really looking out for them and then gets fucking slaughtered because of, of the protagonist's stupid fucking head. You always wait for it. In that, in that movie, you think that's still going to be the thing. And you're going to yeah. be like, ah! Yeah, they really fucking... Uh, that'll tie in later to our little list here, but I, again, 10. Um, production value use. I liked it. I mean, I can't think of really anything that comes to mind about what they used in the movie that I didn't really care for. Yeah, because every scene felt like it was... Uh, it fit. Yeah, everything kind of fit very cohesively together, very believably. Yeah. Um, nothing didn't drag on for too fucking long. They would pretty much just touch and go. Yeah. So, yeah, I would I would give that a 10. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, I'm just going to say for a second, too, I think it's funny. So far, I'm, I'm running 4 to 4. It's got a perfect 10 for me. Um, this movie gets a lot of negative rap. I've, from what I've heard, yeah, a I've lot of people too. don't fucking like this movie. If you don't like this movie, please tell us why in the comments below. Like, what specifically about this movie? You can use our rating system, or if you have your own. Um, yeah, just let us know. We would love to know what specifically about horror movies, not even just this one, just any of them, why you don't like them or why you do like them. Yeah, let's all do this uh, little rating system. This is a good way to really think and talk about your movies. Yeah. Um, how about the acting? The acting I liked. I thought that was really good. The mom was pretty good with the acting, too. Yeah. Uh, hands all around. I, I was, say... You, you felt... I, I really felt one thing specifically I felt was the, uh, the daughter. You really felt the, uh... Tension? The, the tension that she built up between her and her mother. Yeah. You really felt that there. And you could tell, like, throughout the whole thing that it's just, like, believably, you are upset. Yeah. So... And with her, like, taking the her little brother and whatnot. Yes. That actual concern, like, you know, this is some fucked up shit that you need help with. Yeah. I give it a 10. And this is for which one? Acting. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would give that a ten. Originality. And lights out. Yes. You gotta give me a second here. You gotta give me a second here. I know. I'm really trying to go through it and try to see. Like, were there any cliches throughout this? Yes. Yes, there were. Yeah. I, I can't count them all, but. How m- okay, just right off the bat, how many movies do you know that are horror that involve some type of precursor to a psychiatric hospital? Or, oh, I was tested mm-hmm. on, but I escaped, and now I'm being haunted or hunted. Yeah. Or, I'm the fucking monster. Like, they're all cliches in their own respective rights, but, like, it's all, really, it's all about how you use it. But for this, I think I would have to go with an eight. I would go with an 8 for that, because, like I said, the whole psychiatric thing, the the weird tension between, like, family members being, like, a big draw, huge fights and shit like that, and it's like, all right, I get it. And then, not to mention the third-party love interest. Third-party love interest. The fucking, the, the daughter who's leading uh, the key fob guy around. And I, you like how I'm not even using their character names. The daughter and the fucking key fob guy. That's how I know him, key fob. <laughs> uh, that to me, that's a, that's another whole another thing. Like, if you can get through an entire movie without like some type of like love interest type thing, fucking awesome, just awesome. But yeah, it's all about again how about how you use it. This one wasn't so bad. It was like, all right, like she wasn't like full on just stringing him along I guess in a way I mean she was but she wasn't I don't know it's you can see I'm, I'm obviously conflicted yeah um I give it a solid nine nine 
Um, just because, yeah, there. When you really think about it, yeah, there were a couple of little cliches here and there that I was just kind of like, eh. I I look past it. I just kind of choose to ignore that mm -hmm. because I still did like the story. I still enjoyed the movie, but oh yeah, yeah. I guess I'd have to at least in dock it one. Um, how about the? Uh, is it believable? For lights out. Yeah. No, for the other movie. What other movie? I'm being a smart ass. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, did we really make a left turn there? Um, we made a wrong turn. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Prepare for all the sequels! Uh, <laughs> um, I... Fuck. Um, I mean, I guess the whole, like, uh... I'm gonna give this a nine. Because about the whole... I mean, that's the one thing that does kind of... The more I think about it, and the more I'm really, like, reflecting on this movie, that whole psychiatric thing of how she died because she was being tested on, and then, like, she's in her friend's mind, that kind of is just, like, the more I think about it, the more I'm just like, well, how did that happen? And Simply put. It and, makes you think that, like your thoughts can manifest themselves into some type of reality, you know? I'm going to have to go back to my story structure one and erase that 10 now. Uh-oh. I'm bringing it to an 8. An 8. Ooch. And Ooch. the believableness, I'm putting that... I'm putting that at an 8. Yeah? Yeah. I'm going to put that one in 7. 7. Yes. All right, now how about the ending? The ending was sad. <laughs> it was sad. Um, but it was... Uh, I think it was justified. Like, besides the whole... Um, the mom shooting herself. What else happened? I don't really remember. Like, jog my memory, because it's, it's going to come back to me. Yeah, I'm trying to think about that, because once it got, gets to that like, point... Like, was that really it? Like, that was the end of the story? Um, is, it, is there a happy ending? I mean, the daughter and the boyfriend, there they start living together, I'm pretty sure. The fucking kid, I mean, he's, he's out now. So they're at least not being haunted by this Diana... We might have to go That's through That's a problem with me. You forget certain things? I don't think any horror movie deserves a happy goddamn ending. It's a fucking horror movie! Uh, <laughs> the, the good guy shouldn't win in the horror movie? Fuck no! Fuck the good guy! The good guy's the bad guy. Um, as far as the ending, because it's actually... I'm gonna still... S nine. For the ending? Yeah. I'm gonna go with a... Uh, let's go with a seven. Going through seven. Yeah. I didn't hate it, but didn't fully, like, all right, yay, I guess. Unless I am missing something again. I swear to God, if I'm missing something, I just, my brain's not fucking working. How about the use of CGI? So pretty much all of Diana. Um, but they still, I, they use that pretty fucking well. Oh, yeah, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, if it, it's a little practical use, so like, it just all depends on how you use it. I like how they used it, so I, I would give that a 10. All right, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, 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 10, 10. <laughs> you have to really think about that for a second. Yeah. All right, the twists. I, I mean, think the only twist in that movie was really, like... Diana being in her head. Yeah, yeah, and, like, the key pop scene. Yeah. Which, I mean, that's a oh. fucking... Yeah. Um, that's a twist that everyone loves. Yeah. But overall, like, the twist at the end, like, that super impacts the, the movie in a way. That, that would be the only thing, and I... I get it, but, again, it's like... I'd give it the same as the other one. Like, I think it was a seven. Seven? Yeah. Um, like, I, I really like this movie, but I, I, I'm giving it low ratings. It just doesn't make sense, I guess. I'm going to give it an 8. Like, I really like that movie. All right. So, bust out your handy-dandy calculator, and let's add up our scores. This is uh, 
you want to do me or do you want to do you? Uh, well, let's see here. That's you. That's me. All right. Um, I'll do yours again. All right. Um, well, adding up all of yours, it looks like you have given Lights Out a 92 out of 100. Oh, that's about the same as my other one. And that's about the same as the one you gave. It, yeah. Last one. You gave insidious. you gave Lights Out an 87. An 87? Yeah. Yeah, that's about right for me, yeah. yeah. That's about right. Yeah. So, will it scare you? It'll scare Tim more than it will scare me, but Insidious will scare me more than it will scare Tim. No. So, if that is any type of uh, way to get you to go see these movies, we are very... Weird individuals, just to say the least. But this comes up to the final showdown, Mr. Trace. Light, or lights out. We already did lights out. Let's do it again. Hold on. Um, For this one, I'm going to need a cigarette because this is going to become a heated debate. I can tell you that for right now. We will be discussing Evil Dead, the remake. Yep, it's finally come to this, Tim. We've already started talking about this, as I've said beforehand, so... Uh, and I, th- I think a lot of people are going to split sides on this one. Yeah, I feel like there's going to be a lot of me's and a lot of you's out there. Yep. Uh, so let's, without further ado, get to Bring it. it to the final battle royale, motherfucker. The ambience. The ambience. Ten. Ten out of fucking ten. Now, this... This remake, what year did this come out? Was this 2014, I want to say? Uh, I can always check online. So, as I'm talking slowly about Evil Dead... <laughs> 2013. 13, okay, we overshot that. Now, Okay, this is the 2013 remake. Um, was this James Wan? What? Was this one James Wan? I... Don't know, honestly. I don't know about that one. Uh, I don't think it was. Now I could be wrong. When they announced this remake coming out, I, of course, I mean, I, I shit my pants. I was so amped and ready, but at the same time, I was also really scared because of what... Um, no, the director was Fede Alvarez. Okay. Um, I was scared because of, you know, what Hollywood always does with the remakes... But I gotta say, this one was done so fucking beautifully, in my opinion. It, everything about it was fucking perfect. I know a lot of people who, like, just absolutely hate this movie. I, I, I don't understand why. Like, everything's eerie, dark, and creepy, and just, it's everything like the Necronomicon, this fucking book of death, is supposed to be. You know, like, I, I don't get it. Like, y- we have the campy side... And we still have the campy side on, uh, like, I think it's Stars or Showtime with fucking uh, Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Yeah. So, I mean, like, we're still getting best of both worlds. We just got a super dark version of this. I actually just read that that's, that's done. I think is Ash it? vs. the Evil Dead is actually officially done. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Ash said that he was really grateful, or Bruce Campbell, Ash, said he was really grateful for being able to return to Ash and the character that launched their careers, but... You know, they said they're, I think they're officially done. Damn, dude, that's, that's crazy. Unconfirmed, I should probably confirm it, I don't want to officially say something is the way it is if I don't actually know what it is. I hope you're saying. (laughs) Anyway, let's get back to Evil (laughs) Dead. Um, so the ambience, we're both in agreement, that's a 10 out of fucking 10. Yep. They did a good job on the whole feel of it from front to fucking back. Story structure! Oh, God, 10 out of fucking 10. 10. I'd give it a 10. I, I love the way it flowed. I love the whole concept of how the actors, or the I guess the the family of friends as they are, yeah. and two actual family members, uh, <laughs> how the whole story kind of like revolved around Mia trying to like, you know, I'm gonna kick the habit. I'm yeah. gonna ta- I'm, we're gonna lock you in the fucking cabin in the woods. Okay. Yeah, you know, that's the one thing that really did it for me with this was the fact that They've retold this story in a completely new fashion. You know, it, it's not just them just going out to the woods like the original. To, just, yeah, just teenagers on, and shit. Yeah, like, oh, we're just going to go out to a cabin. This is going to be great. No, like, there was a, a mission, a goal. They, they really took it in a 
This is my. Uh, this is gonna spoil my score for a later thing, but I don't fucking care at this point. It took it in such an original fucking standpoint of her trying to get out of a fucking heroin. But it was also a good like way that they did it. Exactly. It's the way that they do it. Um, because the way that it's told, okay, she's kicking heroin. As soon as they fucking said that in the movie, I immediately knew this is going to be everything I want it to be. Because the second, of course, she's the one that's being focused on uh, by the possession. No one's going to fucking believe her because she's off get, trying to yeah. fucking... She's having heroin with Joel's. She's going to fucking hallucinate and see things. And that's, of course, what they think. You know what I first thought of right when she said... The, or they said that? Huh. I was like, oh, fuck, train spotting. And then I just thought of the baby crawling on the ceiling. And I'm uh. like... I, I applied that scene to what they could do with this movie. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, God, this is going to get so morbid. Yes. So, you know, the, the this story was beautiful. Um, the villains, <laughs> I don't need to go into this. The villains were spot on. Holy shit. So Fuck, fucking yes. creepy. <laughs> God damn. There's just that one, the, the one bitch who fucking cut her arm off and then came back as possessed and she was just ah, doing that scream and fucking stabbing the dude or, or that was the other chick. I don't know. No, that was, scary. that was the uh, nurse. Okay. Yeah. Fuck her. Like that was just. I got <sighs> chills going down my spine when I saw that. With her fucking cheeks slit the fuck open to her ear. Yeah, like, that was... All of their acting was spot the fuck on. So, I guess, quickly jumping to ten, acting 10. But, yeah. Uh, no, I just... The su- the weird subtle movements that they had. The quick jerking and, like, fla- like flailing and... Mm-hmm. The shaking. Yeah. The unsteadiness of it. Yeah, they, they like I don't know researched how to get to hell and back, and they did it. Yeah, but I obviously I, some people may not agree, but we really take into consideration about art too. Yes, like we are artists, and the art that they put into that, both lighting and the way that certain things are supposed to look, or like certain setup, like certain like the stepping stones in which the story progresses, is just perfect. Yes. Um. The production value use. 10, 10 out of 10. 10? It was... I mean, I can, I can rave about this movie. Like, yeah. Fucking right up and down. It's... Everything... And just so because good. we're talking about, like, the, the remake does not mean we do not like the original. The original is is amazing in its own Iconic. fucking way. It's, it's a fucking cult classic. And, like, if you don't like it, you're, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You clearly need an introduction to a fucking certain boomstick. Yeah. <laughs> um, acting, of course, 10 out of fucking yeah. 10, yeah. which was the best part about one of the, again, one of the major points that I loved this movie was the actors themselves. These were all people that are, for the most part, not in major roles. They were mostly unknown when this movie came out. Mm-hmm. And they did such a good job yeah they did you know thinking back you know I I maybe this isn't the reason why they did it but if they would have used a bigger name that could have taken away from oh yeah certain aspects of the movie you know everyone would be focused on the main character or the main actor that they know I think that they would yeah they would be really concerned about like okay well why is like the rock in this like why isn't Bruce Campbell's name on here and like why is the rock ash now like yeah well, The Rock is in fucking everything. You know, and I have to say, especially with... it, When this movie, again, when it was released, it said a lot to me when I read that both Sam Ramini and Bruce Campbell had signed on as producers for this remake. Yeah. Uh, that really alleviated a lot of my fears with this because, let's face it, I mean, this was... It's like Bruce Campbell said in a recent tweet. You know, this is the... Uh, this is the story that launched their fucking careers. So for them to back it up financially is just like you know, they believe in it. Yeah. It gave, it gave everybody hope for everything in this movie, you know? Yeah. Uh, the originality. 10 out of 10. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, it's still the whole concept of, like, the book and everything like that. It's self-titled as Evil Dead, not 
something else. Yeah. Or like a two or a three or anything like that. Just Evil Dead. It is what it is. Uh, I guess not. I don't, I don't know. Would it be a remake or a reboot? I think it would be a reboot. Or not. Yeah, I'm not sure. It would have to technically be some type of continuation because that fucking car is still out there. That's something that I wanted to bring up too, and it's funny because okay, I saw this movie like I've I've said it before. I really fucking love this movie. I saw it maybe seven times in theaters, and uh, anytime any one of my friends have said they haven't seen it, I force them to watch that. <laughs> so I don't know how many times I've seen this movie. It wasn't until I tried watching it with my parents, which was actually funny, by the way. A little quick side note: my mom actually lasted through most of the movie up until the tongue splitting scene. <laughs> As soon as it got there, which I'm not going to lie, even I'm still squeamish at that scene because that's just like, ugh. Yeah, cringeworthy. But as soon as that happened, my mom just threw her arms up and walks out the room and says, I'm not doing this. (laughs) (laughs) My dad, however, he sat through the whole thing, and at the end of it, he pointed out that fact that he's like, oh, the beginning, the car that she's sitting on, that's the original car from the first Evil Fucking Dead. Those little tiny nods. Yep. Oh, so amazing. I was like... When the camera pans down to the fucking chainsaw. Yeah, you think he's going to go for the chainsaw, and then it goes somewhere else. Yeah. It's like those tiny little nods. It's like, ah, no, not yet, not yet, It was a total tease, total tease. Yes. And I have to admit, too, the fight scene at the end, when uh, he was trying to knock her out, and she was attacking him, and they were fighting in that little room with the water. Yeah. They shot that just like the original Evil Dead fight scenes. I mean, especially you think back to um, Army of Darkness. Mm-hmm. When he's in the fucking pit, this, that scene was shot exactly like that. So it's like, and uh, when the demon was first coming for Mia in the oh, woods. Oh, going through the trees. And it's going through the trees. It gives it that original feel. It's yeah. so great. They give you that those few nods to the original to say, hey, this is what the movie was, but they still do it in their new way. It's, oh, God. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting off tra- track here. Um... Uh, this was we were talking about the original. Oh, that's, that's, yeah. that's not the next one because that's where we start arguing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the um, ending. Yeah, the ending. I liked it. Fucking ten out of ten. I liked it. You know, because I at first they really made me think like, okay, shit, this is how they're gonna end it. He brings her back. I mean, at first I'm not gonna lie. I'm thinking like, oh, of course she's not real and she's gonna kill him. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Exactly, and then dude comes out of fucking nowhere, and it brings to fruition. It's just like all five of them had to die. I mean, Mia did die, but she was resuscitated. Yep. So all five of them died, and then the fucking evil fucking dude comes out of the fucking ground, and then you actually see the scene. Okay, the one thing it makes me think about this: throughout the whole movie, you're thinking the brother is Ash. Yeah. But at the end of it, it turns out Mia herself was Ash. She gets her hand ripped off, which, holy fuck. That was, ugh. Oh, my God. God damn, dude. That's going to tie into the next fucking category, but oh, my God. And then she gets the fucking chainsaw and cuts dude in half. Oh, it was so great. So fucking great. Yeah, I like that movie. Just right into the face. Yes. Cuts it in half and starts fucking his face with a chainsaw. So I'd say... Ten as well. Ten, ten, um, ten. The use of CGI. Uh, beautiful. That's the best part about this movie. There is not one fucking iota of CGI in this movie. Which, whenever anybody says that, and that's a, like a pretty fucking good movie, and I hear that, it's automatic ten for me because everybody relies on CGI nowadays. Yes. This this movie was entirely practical effects, and they did so fucking much. That it's just like you you gotta fucking like hats off to these motherfuckers. They did so fucking good with that. Now, to the last one before we go into our battle. The twists. The twists. Uh the twists were beautiful because like I said, you know, you're thinking like, oh, Mia's gonna come back, she's gonna kill her brother, they're all yep. dead, and then it's gonna fucking end stupidly. Nope. A whole nother fucking scene of what the fuck they is going on? They make you think on? one way, so that way you don't see it coming, and that's what more horror movies need to fucking do, not be so bland. Yes. It's it's not exactly a, a focus of gore. That's that's the biggest misconception, in my opinion. Oh, it's still, like, pretty gory, but... 
Exactly, but it's gory, but it doesn't rely on the gore mm-hmm. to scare you. That it wasn't the gore that scared me. It was everything about this movie scared me. Yeah. Like, oh god, the dude. possessions are just. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, oh oh fuck god, it, yeah. no. I mean, okay. visually disturbing, yes, but yeah. So okay. All right, and that, now this is what we all come down to. And now, before this, I'm just going to remind everyone, so far, both of us are in agreement With everything. We're at, we're at a perfect score, 10 out of 10 for nine of them. This is the last thing. Which brings it up to at least a 90. At least a 90. And before we say exactly what our scores are, leave a comment down below and let us know what you think about this and <laughs> this argument <laughs> yeah this <laughs> argument that we're about to have I will always disagree with you on this I'm, I'm sorry it's just we're talking the believability of this and I don't ugh oh, fuck okay now we're gonna you can tell we're already getting heated I've been thinking about this for days <laughs> this comes down to one simple aspect when they find the book and it's wrapped in a trash bag wrapped in fucking barbed wire and the fucking history guy. He cut... The gerbil-looking dude. Fucking, uh... He looked like a 70s fucking... He looked like a gerbil. It's just okay. Or a hamster. Uh, he opens the book, he's flipping through it, and it gets to that one page, and it says, don't hear it, don't... Or don't uh, say it, don't write it, don't hear it, something like that. And what does he do? He immediately fucking traces it out and says it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> you don't think that's believable. That is so fucking stupid. Like, I get it. I get it. I get it. The book calls him in. But at the same time, before the book fucking called him in, who the fuck opens up a book wrapped in a garbage bag, surrounded in barbed wire, in a cabin in the middle of the fucking woods? If you are a historian, you obviously have heard about curses and other demonic shit, even whether you believe it or not. You don't open that. It's just, what the hell is going to come? Oh, check it out. I found a Bible, guys. Check it out. I found a Bible. King James. Oh, my God. Why is it wrapped in Bible? <laughs> All right. Now, the one thing that I constantly oh, think about this, and and I'm, I'm saying right now, I give this a 10 out of 10. Um, this whole time throughout the movie, any t- any interaction you have with this character, he is a condescending fucking prick. Yeah, he is just being such a fucking prick, and he's a he's a history teacher in a high school. Um, the way that he's so condescending. There's certain things that I personally think that you could you could kind of I hate to say judge, but let's face it, you can build his character profile based on how you see him act. Because he's condescending, he probably fucking hates his job. You know, not gonna lie. He even said, Oh, being a history teacher turned you into a hard ass. You know, so of course he obviously was fun at one point. He's become hardened by his job. He likes, he's probably really interested in history, but he hasn't done anything besides teach fucking ungrateful little bastards something they, nine out of ten times, fucking don't want to learn about. So he comes across this book, and and I'm going to say, put, it, put yourself in his shoes. He loves history, hates his fucking job, hasn't amounted to anything, he wants to see what his curiosity is to me is what drew him into it. Like I need to fucking see what this is. Once he kind of starts stumbling through it, you real I start to feel like he's starting to think, what can I get out of this? You know, this could, obviously this is something big. This is something old and ancient. Mm-hmm. He's probably thinking I'm going to get ahead in life from this. I'm the person that found this. But on top of it, if you find something and hand it over, maybe you'll get credit. He wants to understand it. So that way, when he gives it off, he actually can have some way to bargain his way to more fame, glory. It could be whatever he wanted from it. I think there were selfish reasons that he wanted to open this book. I can understand that, but just because I can understand it doesn't mean I can see myself doing the exact same thing. I understand that mindset of, like, being able to want more, be able to, like, further whatever it is that you're doing. 
But I am also thinking about, like you said, put myself in his shoes. And I'm imagining, like, the closest place that I have that was ever super fucking haunted. And that's the, Mel- the Melrose house. And I'm imagining finding a barbed wire wrapped fucking camera down there. Like, a, a nice camera. Something that would re- really interest me. Like, and I'm like, okay. So, like, I, I would pick it up. And let's say I even open it. All right? Yeah, I even open it. And now there's inscriptions all along the side that say, don't use it, don't film it, don't uh, delete it, or something like that. Or don't change the tape. And I'm like, all right, me, fuck that. <laughs> fuck that. I like, mean, of course, that's because you have common sense. But like, see, the one thing that also I think plays into this, um, I, this is one thing I was specifically thinking about on my way over here today. Um, when he's flipping through that book and he gets to that page, he cuts his finger on the edge of the book, Mm -hmm. draws blood, and you see the blood fall into the center of the page to where there's that, like, scribble. Yeah. Obviously, some kind of picture was drawn there that someone fucking just, like, tried etching out of the book. Um, since because he, he understood the fact that, okay, this is some kind of witchcraft or something like that, which, you know, clearly it was the necro, it's the fucking Necronomicon. This has to do heavily with ritual, with, um, I mean, okay, yeah, specifically ritual. Blood falling into the center of that page, and then immediately when he looks down at it, his eyes, his pupils immediately fucking go so fucking big. To me, I think that might have been, although not said per se, some kind of like little ritual that kind of really drew more power from the book. And because of the blood? Yes, I think the blood had something to do with it. Oh, yeah, it probably did. Like, definitely. They wouldn't have shown it like how they showed it in the movie if it didn't have any significance. They'd be like, oh, well, he got a paper cut, stupid. <laughs> 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 Look at him, bitch, throughout the rest of the movie because he got a paper cut. He gets, I mean, he, he, he gets fucked. Oh, hell yeah, he does. Most. He definitely I'm pays glad he does. for what he did. D- damn right. But, I mean, everything, the way that I, that's the way I viewed that whole scene. And to me, that's fucking believable. That's someone that's just a condescending I, prick who who wants more out of life and feels and his curiosity paired with maybe a fucking selfish I, reason for furthering I, his... Yeah, but I mean, like, I get why he was a condescending prick, though. Like, his friends had, like, all moved on, shit like that. Yeah, including, like, his workspace and everything like that. It's probably really shitty. But the way that they were kind of, like, making it seem is that he was just pissed off because his fucking buddy left. And so, like, he even says it towards the end. And so that's why I'm like, okay, okay, like, I can kind of see, like, why you were just being like, hey, cool, chill, dude, whatever. But with someone who, like, in, in my opinion, if someone who's like that, you wouldn't do that. Or at least you shouldn't. I mean, obviously everyone knows you shouldn't. But, yeah, let's be real. And to any of our listeners... If you find a book that's wrapped in a garbage bag and wrapped in barbed wire and it's buried around a bunch of dead cats hanging from a fucking shack that looks decrepit, also next to a shotgun with a whole case of shotgun shells, you should probably walk away. Or load the shotgun and prepare for wave one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was wondering where you were taking that. <laughs> but, I mean... So, okay. What do you rate it, then? I would give the believability out of it an 8. I know, I know. But I don't feel it's a 100% perfect movie. I, I, it hurts me to say, like, I'm, I'm stuttering over myself, but, like, just the hamster guy. I just... I believe the hamster would walk away. I don't want to think the hamster and him would summon demons and kill all his friends. I mean, he didn't mean to. No, I get it. But But okay, okay. that's your opinion. You're entitled to it. So that gives you... That that puts our scores. Pat, you give... I'm a 98. I give this movie a perfect 100. I love this movie like I've said I've seen this movie like oh god so many hundreds of times 
and I love it, and I could watch it any fucking day. Oh man, now I feel like the Simon Cowell of the show. <laughs> it's just not good enough. It's just not good enough. Nope. It's rubbish! Okay, well... I guess we'll start bringing this episode to a close since we've already taken up all of your ear time for those of you who are listening. I know, we had to have been talking for at least like an hour or something. Oh, yeah. Longer than that, dude. Way longer than that. But that was our first segment of Will It Scare You? And so far... Eh, we got three movies. You know, yeah, Insidious. You know, this, this movie is, again, we averaged around like a 90. I think that was the average score. Yeah, with uh, the higher 90s added in there, yeah, we're like... I think the like average would be like 92, 92 somewhere around there. So yeah, it's Insidious, Lights Out, Evil Dead, go see them. I mean, if, if, I feel like They're most not people theaters. have seen them. You can eat... Everyone's got fucking Netflix or... or said, go f- see them. Go to a friend's house and see them. To I don't our know. friends? Go to... Yeah, come to our friend's house and see them. Go to your phone's location and see it. Oh... Yeah, explain myself out of that one. <clears throat> well, I'm going to lock Tim in the basement tonight. Oh, uh, <laughs> But as we said at the beginning of the show, keep an eye out for when the episodes drop. We might not be able to give a lot of time as to when they are going to drop. So whenever you see them, start listening. Keep us informed about what you guys want to see here and your opinions on everything. Send us your art, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and... Um Fuck, I totally had a good point to say, and I forgot what I was going to say, so I'm just going to hope that it comes back to me. Oh, um, we're not exactly sure, too, when we're going to be able to... We don't have a schedule for recording episodes of Witches Hill, so we'll be recording when we can. You know, there's going to be a lot of planning going into these. We have many different kind of segments of the show that we're uh, discussing and working through how we're going to go about doing it. Um... So whenever we get a chance to record, it might be last minute, but you know we'll be letting you know as soon as we can and dropping it so you guys could hear it wherever you need to. Also, if you would like to follow me on Instagram, uh, look up Let's Talk Horror, and you will find me. And that is pretty much all I have to say <laughs> at this point. I would like to say you could follow me on social medias, but I am not interesting on social medias. Um, I need to change that. He posted a picture of a foot today. Did I really? No. I'm you fucking I'm dick. Fuck it. What? You wouldn't remember that? I'm fuck. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this has been Witches Hill. I'm Pat, and I am your worst nightmares. He's Tim. We'll see you later. (laughs) Bye. Which is hell.